Hi, I'm Professor Michael T. Bates. Welcome to Villanova University and the fifth annual Remy Pressus Hall of Fame Foundation Summer Camp for Black Belt Training. Today we have an exciting cast encompassing the arts of small sickle jiu-jitsu, western boxing, and a lot more. Thanks for joining us. Let's go meet our guests. Well, I mean, I fought so many little redneck kids who called me Chink and Chinaman and all that. I said, what do you call me? They said, you Chink. I said, oh, really? Boom. <laughs> and then I said, now, what am I? I'd have nailed your ass to the wall. He takes on jobs others can't cut. Me and you, Chinaman. The motion picture that proves once and for all that man's deadliest weapon is still his fist. Low blow, hammer it home. Brother Funk, I know people looking at this are going to be amazed that you're 87 years old. You were mm. born in, in 1928. 1928. Yeah. Uh, the year of the dragon, Sky yeah. Dragon. Yeah, I'm Sky Dragon. Bruce is a uh, small dragon. I was born in 55. I think that was the year of the shopper. You got a secret? Well, the main thing is keep moving. And, and, and three things, is Trinity, I call it Trinity of Health. Number one, exercise. Number two, food. And number three, mental attitude. One program don't fit all. I had just finished a movie. The movie was uh, Murder in the Orient. I look at that uh, movie, we had a big showing and over 2,000 people showed up for the grand opening. I walked out after the uh, screening and the crew was like this. I said, what's the matter guys? He said, we ain't gonna get no more jobs. <laughs> I said, but you know, it's funny, 10 years later, I went to a Comic-Con, and I brought it and showed it, and all these kids, they said, hey, where can I get a copy of that movie? Oh That's word. a cool movie. That's, there yeah. you go. I met Bruce in 1962, and in 63, he came down to Oakland and lived with Jimmy Lee, on the way to L.A. to go to try and make it in the movies. First movie, Big Boss. He opened midnight in Hong Kong. The place was packed, and when it was over, everybody went apes. So afterwards, he, he came back, he said, I'm gonna do a second one. He said, hey, hey, man, I'm going to have Chuck Norris in the next one. He would have been the middleweight kickboxing you know champ, I Chuck did. Norris? Well, he's got uh, name recognition. He said, that's not why I'm getting in there. He said, I'm tired of white folks kicking the Chinese butt and making them be butlers, dishwashers. He said, I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to have them to play the bad guy, and I'm going to kick their ass. I never heard that. Yeah, that's, yeah. He said, awesome. he's co confidential. He said that to me. I said, I laughed. I said, Bruce, you're right. I wasn't in the movie, so I didn't care. Over the years, there's been this uh, controversy that, in reality, Chuck Norris was a middleweight kickboxing champ. Uh, Bruce Lee wasn't known for being a, a kickboxing stylist at that time. And the controversy to this day is, could Chuck Norris have beaten Bruce Lee in that scene? I, I don't think Chuck would have been a walkover. Chuck is a tournament fighter. Bruce Lee hit for real. And even though he didn't have a lot of experience, I think he would have done real well against Chuck, because Chuck's tournament fighter, and he pulls the punches. I used to promote tournaments up in Northern California. He was good at boom, like that, and score a point, and then, then he would come boom, point. You got to keep it within uh, reality. I sparred with Bruce Lee one day, and I knew I w how he works. I wasn't going to go after him. See, I boxed before. Boxing is a real deal. Uh, that's why boxers get punch drunk. They're not afraid of getting hit. See, you take some of these martial arts guys that never got in a fight, they're scrimmage. Yeah. But the tournament down and stuff don't do it. It just teaches you timing, a little bit of timing. Did Bruce Lee train himself to death? No. You know, I, I think rather than all this fantasy about him getting poisoned, death touch and all that, he probably had aneurysm in his uh, brain. He probably had a brain he was born with that was very thin and weak, and at the wrong time, it, it burst. He had a... A serious stroke. Yeah. Yeah. And didn't re resolve it to you because they tried to give him that pill uh, and, and it didn't work because he had a bad headache. Yeah. If they poisoned him, he would have had a headache after the pill. He just died a natural death. Well, we'll leave it at that. Yeah, yeah. And Thank I believe you it. again. Yeah, you, you're welcome. Brother Fung. Yeah, you're welcome. Brother Fung. <laughs> <laughs> Small circle jiu jitsu, you know, is actually kind of misnamed. And my father knew it. If you want to keep someone from escaping, you take away the space. So if you tighten it up, it gives them less opportunity to escape. But really, small circle jiu-jitsu is a tightening circle. Like you think about a funnel as it tightens up, as it's spinning down. When my father was uh, younger, boxing. he was being challenged by this one chap at work all the time, and just always putting him up. My dad put the boxing gloves on and beat him so bad he put him in the hospital. That hurt my father deeply inside because he, he was a very humane man. He created small circle jiu-jitsu with the idea of not how much you hurt the person, 
how little you have to hurt him and still control them. Then when he moved from Hawaii, even there he was getting a, a lot of shtick from uh, the judo people. I mean, they were actually grandstand laughing at him. My boy and I was humiliated. We all sat in the bleachers, all, all the teachers, and they all turned and faced me. They're laughing at me right in front of my face. So I said, I'm gonna come back again. I said this to myself. And this time I won't come back until I can beat you folks. And when I think of small circle jiu-jitsu, I, I almost think of like a fine watchmaker, the, the craftsmanship and the attention to detail, which, which makes small circle different from a lot of systems of, of jiu-jitsu, certainly world apart from judo. Then let's look at it. Police like it. That's right. Air marshals like there it. There you go. People that cannot just do lethal force all the right. time. Right. Some of our guys that are doing our air marshalling, they said, well, okay, we were getting to the joint locks, but when we got to the fingers, we could walk people off that plane and nobody knew. So. You have the small circle mantle now. Has it changed since your father? Has it evolved a little bit? Absolutely. The, the changes that have happened, you know, they're just organic. I know in the old days, it was like you stick to this and that's the way it is. You can still see today people doing the same thing that they were doing 60, 80 years ago. I believe that you'd be better if you have more, more uh, martial arts styles you learn. Because everyone has something that you can use, but like I told Bruce Lee, you don't have to be a black belt in every art to learn everything. To me, the, the original rebel would have been Bruce Lee. Your father had a unique relationship with him. Yeah. I mean, he told me, uh, this is Bruce. Uh, yeah, Bruce, you're coming over. Yeah, uh, stop and get some rice and tea. Yeah, we were heading through Seattle, and uh, I think it was Dr. Jane Lee goes, uh, we got, you got to meet this guy. Yeah. So we went to this uh, Chinese church, and we filed downstairs, and there was Bruce doing his thing, and his dad was like, whoa, this guy's good. Yeah. And he moved down to uh, uh, Oakland, to live with Jimmy Lee uh, about a year later and uh, stayed there for a couple years and he used to come over for two years uh, training with my father. You know, so it was, it was quite cool. I have witnessed your late father hmm. shake your hand. It's okay. Let's make a, uh, make a pinky swear. Uh, Give me a pinky swear. I've been there. We're just going to shake hands. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you have never lived to have seen his father uh, shake his hand and next thing Leon knows. Oh dear. He's up. Yeah. Your history. We're out. Thank you.